Come on. There it is. And that's the home run. Okay, this is her full spine x-ray. This is looking at her from behind. This is right, this is left, and this is the side profile. And the thing I want you to notice here on the side profile first is um, we do a posture assessment. And in the posture assessment, you can clearly see we're taking a, a line from L5 and running it straight up to C2. It should bisect between C2 and at C2 and C7. What we see here is that the upper body is actually behind the foundation. So as we've talked about in previous videos, these muscles are working a lot harder just to keep her in balance. And that's part of what she was experiencing. She said, I have back issues, but also the neck. And it was more troublesome up top, correct, Anna? Yeah. yeah. So the key is to work on the foundation to bring this back up. Now, if we look at the A to P or looking at her from behind, we can see what, it's not so much that we have kinks in the spine. We can see from around the mid back, upper mid back, it starts to veer to the left side. And when we're looking at the foundation, we can see there's a little bit of imbalance in the foundation. So as we zoom into the foundation, we can see here's the pubic bone, there's the crease of the bum, it's slightly off. We can see the hips are slightly off, but more importantly, we can see that the sacrum is slightly bent to that left side. So we did work on her sacrum, and part of it was getting a good torque on the sacrum to uh, help with that imbalance. So she's living in Pennsylvania. You're in countryside, right? That's correct. Countryside, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of work you guys do, right? What are some things you do around the, around the property? Um, I mow the yard, I do the trimming with the weed whacker, I don't know. You don't have gardeners over there? Hmm? You don't have gardeners? Yeah, it's us. Okay, we have gardeners. We have gardeners doing everything over here. Over there, you guys are doing a lot we of the do physical. It ourselves. Yeah? Yep. You don't outsource it. <laughs> okay. All right, come back over here. Let me go over this briefly. We do have a slight short leg on that right side. 73 and 71 we have a little bit of rotation on that left side but most important is this is the rotation of this pelvis and we have 232 so we have an asin on the left side it's gone up and in and we have a rotated sacrum on that same side now if we have a rotated sacrum on the side of an asin ilium the book tells us to do what it tells us to do the sacrum but what we're going to do today, uh, since we've done some work with her and we're working off this x-ray, uh, after the walk and the uh, scoping, we're going to do the Gonstead leg check. And the Gonstead leg check is to determine if we're going to continue on sacrum or pelvis today. Okay? So let's look at the overall posture first. And we can see the right side is slightly higher than the left. This is a little bit more pronounced. Okay, if we're looking at it from the top side here, here's the upper back. Is this your normal standing position? Yeah. Okay, do me a favor, just march in place. March in place, close your eyes. Close your eyes, keep marching. Keep your eyes closed and stop. Good. Now, if we look, we can see here, this is the upper body, this is the lower body. So we still have some work to do on her posture. Okay, this is behind the foundation, so there's still a little bit of tension in the top. Can I have you walk, please? And you're gonna walk several times back and forth. Well, we did have the Pennsylvania wiggle back when you started. We don't have that wiggle as much anymore. <laughs> really? Yeah, so you know what I call the wiggle? It's when we're looking at the dimples in the pelvis, they should go up and down. I'm talking about these dimples here. Right? You see the dimples in, in the back. They should go like this. When she came, it was more this, side, side to side. Walking is good. Walk on your toes, please. Okay. We have a little bit of shift in the upper lumbar, L2, L3. Turn around, please. Regular walking. I want us to focus over here when she walks. 
So you can see it kinks back and forth when she walks around L2, L3. Okay, have a seat. Let's get started. Let's see what we find today. Cool. You have any questions for me, Anna? I don't. Starting at the base of the neck. Head down, please. Good. And we're getting about a six point reading. C1, C2, left side. You know you still have work to do on your posture, yeah? Yep, I know. Okay. The good part is that most of the pain is gone. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah. Cool. All right. Five, six points. That's around T6, T7. is okay right now. Sit up a little straighter, please. How's uh, where you guys are staying? Beds are okay? Okay. Now, as we're running down the low back, we have just a tiny bit left down low. Tiny bit. Okay, we're going to check between sacrum still and pelvis. We have around T7, and we have up at C1. Let's statically palpate, please, running our fingers down the spine. Head down, please, round your back. Good. And you can see there's a little bit of dishing here, and you can see the bones here of the back. It dishes in through here. This dishing is starting here at around T6, T7. You're looking at someone's back and you're rounding your back. You should see all the spinous processes, all the bumps here. You can see all of them to right about that T7. It dishes in to about here, and then it continues to dish here, okay? When we see that, that's part of the posture and there was some trauma here in the mid back. Static palpation. And you can see right when I get to right about there, we get the slight orange peel and edema right there. Tender there? Yeah. More tender at the bottom one or the top one? Top one. Okay, head down, please. Let's count. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And ideally for Anna, what we want is we want a nice curve in the low back going forward like this. This should be her normal posture. Bring your belly button in and up, okay? Relax the shoulders, please. This should actually be, come here, check this out on the side. You look straight ahead, see? Look, this is balanced. When she has this posture, this should be her ideal and things are more balanced. Go back to what's comfortable for now. You see the difference there? And you can see that the upper body is behind the foundation. So these muscles are working too hard to keep balance. So you're going to make sure when you see her slow. I'll be on. You got it? got it? Awesome. Okay. Let's check down low. Okay. Feet together. Open and close the knees. Feet together. Open and close the knees. Scoop forward just a little bit, please. Got it. Open and close. Open wide. Feet are touching. Mm -hmm. Okay. Left side only. So when she does the left, slight little shift. Do the right side only. When she does the right, there's more movement. The entire left is moving. Do you feel that here? Yeah. Okay. Is it more tender when I push on the top here or the bottom? Mm -hmm. That's the bottom. That's the top. A little bit more on the top, not much. A little bit more. Okay, scoop back for me, please. And let's check. Sit up straight. You still got work to do, you know that, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. That's L5, S1, S2. More tender at S2 or more tender at S3? They're honestly kind of equal. Meaning S3 yeah. is tender, S2. Maybe S2 just a little more. Okay, S4. No, not as much. S3. Mm -hmm. S2. More S2. 
I think so, yeah. Right there. More on the left side, more on the right side. Uh, About the same? Yeah. Okay. So we have S2, we have left pelvis, we have T7, and let's check the top. Sit back for me, please. And let's check. What's this thing called? The headdress? A veil. A what? A veil. It is a veil? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what we call it. Call it a veil. Mm -hmm. If I think of veil, I think veil, like cover. Does that open up and cover everything up? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend right, bend left okay we have c1 t7 we're going to now check sacrum versus the pelvis on the left side okay, okay. stand up for me please if you're going to go face down over here and i want your ankles hanging off the edge please there you go okay slide up there you go. so let's take a look over here all right let's look at the heels and when we look at the heels together, the left side is slightly longer. Do you see that too? Okay. When we flex, we're going to now flex at the knees or we're going to flex the knees and see. If this stays longer than the left stays longer than the right, we're adjusting the pelvis. If it goes shorter, we're doing the sacrum. Okay. So let's bend. What do we have, guys? Look from, go to her head, go to the front. What do we have? It's still longer on that side. So guess what we're doing? The pelvis. We're gonna do left pelvis, T7, C1. You ready, Anna? Yeah. Let's do it. Stand up, please. Let's walk it up. So mom and dad wanted to actually see your video, right, in Pennsylvania. Just do a little follow-up for them. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Let's get started. Let's have a seat over here. Left hand up. We're gonna put the seat belt on. There we go. You good with that? Yep, that's fine. Okay, look up. And C1, don't help too much, please. Lift ear down. Nope, you're helping too much. Let it just fall. There you go, gotcha. Awesome. Let's go face down over here on the high low and let's do T7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, T7. Gotcha. Home higher. Okay, let's continue. Let's walk it off once. Right side down and oh, face. Right side. right side, head over here, face that way. So guess what, uh, now we're gonna get the cobra. You ready for the cobra? Sure. Melvin said he wanted to see the cobra, so I gotta do the cobra. You know the cobra? Oh, the cobra. He looks better with my glasses. Scary. What's that? It sounds scary. It's not scary. Slide forward, please. There we go. Tap forward. There it is. It's more internal, so we need to do more of the internal rotation. Okay, you're ready. So we're right here, medial border, PSIS, one, two, three finger contact, hook it, hook the medial aspect of the PSIS and Melvin, this is for you. So I'm sure you're gonna do something like this at home to continue it, right? I know he's doing stuff at home. Mm -hmm. Nice and easy there. And that's the home run, gotcha. Come on up and let's walk it up. <sighs> what you think? Feels good. Cool. Have a seat, let's continue. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and scope, rescope, and then we're going to do jaw, shoulders, ears, ankles. Okay. You got work to do on your posture though, still. Starting at the base. And neck is clear. You got questions for me in at all? I don't think so. Okay. Everything feels really good. Okay. It feels good, but we know there's still work to do on the posture, yes? Yeah. Okay, I keep repeating that, I know. <gasps> T7 is clear. Sacrum is clear. Now, let's continue, okay? I'm gonna work on the ears. Ears. Gotcha. Shoulders. Right shoulder, let me do the work. Sit up a little straight, please. Good. Over, around, we're doing an AI shoulder. There, there you go. Over, around. Nope, that's it. Okay. Let's go on your back, please. Actually, let's check those ankles first. Go face down. I want to see them off there. Now, I want you guys to know when I'm doing the leg check, it's just to determine which, I'm, which side I'm going to adjust. There are some methods out there that use this to determine any adjustment and that it has, and they post check it to see that the adjustment was effective. I'm just checking to see if anything changed. And if you look now, come. This changed, right? Look right on top, you can see it. Okay, this changed. All right, so they're more even now, but that wasn't my intent. My intent was just to determine what I was going to adjust. Flip onto your back and let's do your ankles now. Now the fun part, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. All right, so we're just using a little bit of lotion to work out some of the swelling and scar tissue in the ankles. She has bilateral AS talus medial tilts. We have sprained this. She's a hard worker working on the land. I've sprained that? Yeah, you've twisted this at some point. I have. Yeah. Or you wouldn't have this stuff here. Now here's the thing, you know, from kids, as, as children, we're playing, we're slipping, we're falling, we're moving around, we bounce back, right? Suck it up, keep going, you know, and if the pain is gone, the problem should be gone. That's not always the case. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. So she does have the AS talus right there with the medial tilt and periarticular swelling. We're working it towards the heart, away from the joint. And then we're gonna do passive range of motion to equalize the joint pressure. And then we're gonna set the talus. Four, three, two, one. Okay. Let's go ahead and set the talus. Hold on. Gotcha, gotcha. Now let's do the right side. There you go. Hi, Shasha, what's up? Hi, I'm what's just watching. On? Yeah. She's doing great. She's doing great. You feel that more on this side? Yeah. Yeah. Five, four. So you coming from Pennsylvania. We got a few videos with your mom and dad, right? That's and I, I made a mistake because <laughs> I labeled them Amish couple. Yeah. Because that was a, the mis that was my misconception because when you the appearance was that mm -hmm. and that's what was kind of told in the beginning, then I kind of wondered. I said my understanding was that the Amish community doesn't really watch or use electronics, correct? Yeah. And then your dad educated me on uh, the difference. There's a difference, yes. right? There's a difference. And he said that, uh, he said, just correct me. It's Amish Mennonites or just Mennonites? 
How would you they, describe it? I'm just curious. Well, we did come from the Amish. Okay. And some people, some Mennonites didn't come from the Amish. But you came from the Amish yeah. community, you're Amish Mennonites, and so the you main did. difference is what? We just want to educate everybody. I don't know. It can it can get pretty confusing really fast if you don't really know the Mennonites. I would just call myself Mennonite because I don't. It's easier. No. Or you I don't do any Amish things. Like I'm not. Like what? Well, like we advanced. We'll put it that way. We advanced, advanced from, how? From the Amish, we're more mo We use more modern things like we technology. Use, we use technology. We fly. We have electricity. Okay. We how do they get around then? They're horse and buggy. So if they wanted to go cross country, they would really go horse and buggy cross country? No, they get, they'll get people to take them in vehicles. They so don't travel. No, they, don't they, travel. Don't travel. they don't travel. They never travel. They Some don't. kids don't go much out of our valley. Well, I used to be, I had, uh, I was working in a clinic years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm talking 18 years ago, a clinic in Mexico. And there was a big Amish community used to come from Pennsylvania. I never asked them how they got there, though. Yeah, probably by train. By train? Yeah. Not planes? No. Okay. We're going to do the right talus. And you you guys are the new generation. Yeah, you can say that. Ah! Dirty. The ankle I'm talking about. Okay. So where do you see the community going? Your generation. People going to get out get out and about or they're still staying within the community? There's quite a few that stay within the community. There's some, of course, with all generations, you know, that go out, but yeah. Well, her parents would have been Amish. But I wouldn't have been. Some of her what? siblings would have grown up Amish. I was, like, I never grew up in the Amish community. Okay. All right. You guys gonna venture out, or are you gonna stay in the community? Um, you mean as far as staying? Like living? You're gonna stay yeah. there? You guys gonna branch out? I'm just curious. I, I wouldn't say that I'm never gonna branch out because I probably will. Someday. Be careful, your dad's watching. Yeah, I know. Okay. He already knows that. Yeah, so he knows, right? Yeah. Let's walk a little bit. I just thought it was cool to share some some of the experience. Um, we have a lot of viewers and we have a lot of people that from many different communities and cultures and countries and it's always nice just to get a little is there anything else you want to share i mean not really all right look straight we're looking at the jaw this is the symphysis mente we're looking for is it straight or does it deviate one side or the other if it deviates, it's always, if there's a problem in the TMJ, it's gonna deviate away from the problem side. Go ahead and open the jaw, slowly close. Slowly open. Right side opens first, so it does this and then compensates on the left. Open all the way, close halfway. We're gonna do a lateral to medial pressure, left to right. Good. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and use the condyle block. Condyle block is to stabilize the cervical spine so we don't disrupt it during the adjustment. Open the jaw all the way. Open. Open. Slowly close. Come on. There it is. Gotcha. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Let's open the jaw and see. Open and close. Open all the way. Good. Now let's do a little buff and polish for you. Five, four, three, two, one. Sit up straight, please. And we'll do a little buff on the back. So you guys only made it out for a couple of days. That's correct. I mean, maybe if it wasn't over Christmas time, we could have stayed longer. Say that again? Maybe if it wasn't over Christmas time, we could stay longer. Right. Do they do anything special for the holidays in the town? In the town? Yeah, in town. Do they do anything special during the holidays? Um, do they? It's not huge. Maybe just a little, little something. But, you know, with our, you know, the whole Mennonites, they get together. 
family and everything. So mainly it's just the families are, are doing things amongst themselves. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait, we'll, we'll have people that will go Christmas caroling, go singing, go give out things, stuff like that. So where's my present? Oh, Squeeze. Where's my puppy? The puppy is still back home. Okay. So I'm very curious to check out this, uh, this Instagram of uh, these puppies. And uh, I know there's a long waiting list. Yeah, I'm not sure what it, do you know what it is now? It's about a year, probably. About a year? Okay. Let's do scaphoid lunate. Lunate. Scaphoid. Thumb. Squeeze. Squeeze. Awesome. Scaphoid. Squeeze. We are all set. Thank you. No questions? I don't think so. Okay. So we're all set for today. I'll probably see you guys in February, March, maybe as late as April with the whole family. Okay, sounds good. It's good seeing you again. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>